Yes, Mitch. Thanks a lot. Okay. I want to start off with two basic facts about international law. Fact one. Unarmed civilian populations are protected persons under international law. Every indiscriminate attack on Gaza against civilians is a violation and illegal under international law. Yes. So what do we say to those responsible for those attacks? We say, shame! 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 shame. Now yes, we know that there have been attacks in return, but this is not an equal conflict. This is a response by desperate people under occupation. It is a disproportionate response where 2,000 people, predominantly children, women, those who are not combatants, have been killed. How many on the other side? 67. The second basic fact about international law in the law of armed conflict, combatants can be targeted for military purposes. That is what international law allows in terms of military self-defense. Targeting of combatants for military purposes. We know that what Israel is doing is not for military purposes, it is for political purposes. And the political objective is effectively to eliminate Palestinian people from the territory. Yes. It is not, therefore, under the law of armed conflict, justified for military objectives. But even if it was justified for military objectives, the targets would have to be combatants. The targets are not combatants. The targets are civilians. They are children, they are defenseless families, they are those who are clustered under what they think will be the protection of the United Nations in schools and hospitals and they are the targets. So when Israel says that it is acting in military self-defense, that is untenable in international law. To target civilians in this manner is a war crime. And we say to Israel, shame, 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 shame. So what do we do about this? In these times, we're supposed to turn to the United Nations. But the United Nations itself is finding itself crippled. When the UN facilities themselves have been bombed, we have had Ban Ki-moon come out in a forthright matter, manner and condemn what has been happening. Other parts of the United Nations have also sought to see what can be done. The Human Rights Council had an emergency meeting last month and they passed a resolution. It's a powerful resolution and I just want to read the first short two paragraphs. The Human Rights Council strongly condemns the failure of Israel, the occupying power, to end its prolonged occupation of the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, in accordance with international law and relevant UN resolutions. The Human Rights Council condemns, in the strongest possible terms, the widespread systematic and gross violations of international human rights and fundamental freedoms arising from the Israeli military occupations and operations carried out in the occupied Palestinian territory since 13 June 2014. The Human Rights Council had 47 voting members. 29 voted in favour of that resolution. 17 abstained, predominantly members of the European Union. The EU voted.
voted in a block once it became clear that Ireland, having suffered their own centuries of occupation, wanted to vote for the resolution. So the EU abstained. One country voted against. And who was that? The USA. But what is of even more concern is that two other countries spoke out and said that they would have voted with the US. Australia and Canada. No. What message do we want to send to them? Shame! 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 So who can do something? The Security Council. There is an entity called the International Criminal Court. It sits in judgment on war crimes. The Palestinian Authority has not signed the necessary treaties to be able to refer Israel and the Israeli leadership responsible for these atrocities to the ICC. But the Security Council can do so. But we know who holds the veto powers on that Security Council. What would New Zealand do if it won its seat on the Security Council? At present, it looks, especially from the statements that we've had from the Prime Minister, that they would side with the likes of the US, Australia and Canada and refuse to take action against Israel. We have to ask, therefore, what are the other options? The options are that we create so much heat that there is no choice. That we do what we did with apartheid, Rhodesia and South Africa. That we do what we did with the anti-nuclear policies. That we do what we did in Aotearoa to bring the treaty into the public arena and demand that it is honoured. We say that these things must be done in our name. We turn up the heat. We get them to expel the Israeli ambassador. We get them to support a boycott. We get them to disinvest. And we get our governments, whatever their ilk, to present us and represent us in a way that we are proud of so that we can stop the genocide that is happening in Palestine, bring those who are guilty of war crimes to account, and we can be proud of the role that we have played. So let's send one more message to the government and to John Key when he said he would not expel the Israeli ambassador. We say to him, 